Hey guys, welcome to Monday Night Inking. I got, uh, well, I thought I was gonna be behind schedule for a minute there, because I got wrapped up in this. Forgot to start the stream, but I hit it just in time. That's your high drama for this evening. Yeah, I got wrapped up working on this commission. I was just putting some of the spatter around the edge. This is some sponging and some spatter. Obviously this whole frame is going to be black. But if you're not familiar with this particular episode of Mystery Science Theater, it was such a dour, like poorly lit, boring sort of black and white and disappointing gray and just generally blurry framed, low quality, all that stuff. So I was trying to reference sort of the the grubbiness of the film quality in this piece. Um, but I don't think, yeah, I need to let some of this spatter dry. So I'm going over to the page that I was going to work on today for the stream. Make sure I get this up. I'll put this here for you in a minute here. Let me make sure I have the pencils available to look at. Here's the pencils. I always keep the pencils close so I can reference them easily. Because half the time you got to remind yourself what you meant. All right, I'm missing, missing people's comments already. You guys are jumping right in today. JY Dawn says, so crazy how you do all of this traditionally. Yeah, man, I love doing it traditionally. I love traditional work. It's really tactically satisfying. Um, and also I can sell my originals. And if you're in this sort of specific avenue of artists that I am, selling original artwork is uh, one of your main income streams. So that's what, part of why I do it, mainly because I love it. All right. People saying hi, people thumbs up, people waving. Good to see you all. Welcome to the stream as always. So I'm going to start with, this is a pretty simple page. This is just a talking page. Um, but I'm going to start with this foreground hand because that looks fun. Let me see if I can get a better angle on my camera here. Because I started too quickly. Let's see here. I also know that my, my phone arm as it has been, is deteriorating. Its final days are approaching, so I'm gonna have to invest in a new one. Let me find an angle that doesn't, there we go, that works pretty well. I don't wanna be shoving my face into the camera there. I already have to pull back pretty far compared to how close I usually work when live streaming, so don't wanna exaggerate that. So if you follow my Patreon, you'll know I've been working really hard on studying the planes of the face and shadows and lighting on the face. So uh, I was able to do this as a result of those studies. Actually, let me show you. This is fairly exclusive. You guys are all tuned in. Let's see. So here's some of my facial lighting studies I've been doing with different light sources, thinking about the different planes of the face. You can see I have, these are all just like copies of the one, the one face I drew, but with uh, the planes of the face on it. So if you understand those, you can start to understand how light really travels over the face. This one was particularly successful. I'd always been bad at spotting this cheekbone highlight with pretty average lighting like this. This is lighting you see a lot. This is pretty normal lighting. And um, that one's good too. This one was surprisingly hard. <laughs> uh, it's not even a joke. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. So that's one of the things about this page that I'm very proud of, was that I was able to do things like that sort of facial lighting, which I had really not been able to do before. So always be studying, guys. Always studying new things. There's no such thing as arriving. All right, let's see here. 
But I went on that tangent because I was looking at the shadows I already have delineated here on this hand. So we're gonna explore those somewhat as we work on this. Wrist bone there. Pretty heavy. What did I have there? Pencils. Okay, these were separate. So there's a, a render shadow here. So we'll start. Menu Tradercha? I'm so sorry. When y'all's uh, when y'all's usernames get too fancy, I become useless. Uh, do you play Among Us? I don't, honestly. Confession time. I really don't play anything. I haven't played a video game since I was like, ugh, eleven. No, it was older than that. Maybe like fourteen. I don't know. What they don't tell you is when you take up drawing professionally. It sucks up all your time. That's an excuse though. That's just a that's just a lame excuse. I don't game because I'm no good at it. I suck at it. Sarah Helfer's a smiley face. Elisa Trowski is in. Hello Elise. All right, now this side, the side facing the light, you gotta start thinking about where the highest points of highlight are gonna be, and that's where the line needs to break a little bit, or at least get thinner. So you see there, the knuckles bending towards the light are gonna get a pop of highlight on the sharpest point. There's going to be more shadow in there, but I'm not sure yet. All right, let's see. Oz76 says, hi from London. Love your work. Thank you. And say hi to London for me. I've never been. What kind of paper do you use? Is it smooth? No. So this is, hold on, let me get my tape here. I will get you my example. And if you ever have questions about my tools... Uh, I have them saved in my highlight reel on my uh, profile, so you can always look there. This is what I use. I use the Strathmore Bristol, and this is the uh, the vellum surface, so it is a little bit textured. You can sort of see the texture in there. Let's see if it... Yeah, it doesn't really focus. Um, but this is a 400 series, which means it's just very dense, very tightly packed. So the ink won't bleed. So that is the paper that I use, at least for inking. Um, let me think. Yeah, for penciling, I use a smoother page and just a cheaper quality page because that doesn't really matter. All it really needs for penciling is to be able to hold up to uh, sufficient erasing. Whatever constitutes sufficient erasing. That amount will change. Uh, Joey, T oh, this is a good question. Joey, you always have the best questions. Uh, when you see an artist cheat with lighting, does it stop your enjoyment of a book? No, that's an amazing question, but no, because something I like to say, and I don't know how accurate this is, I've just found this to be true in my experience. Comics is about 40% lying. Uh, a lot of times with things like shadows, with things that you can technically qualify, that you can like mathematically get right or wrong, you are going to fake it because it's either A, not worth doing exactly right for the value that the panel represents, which is a little bit lazy, but you'd be surprised how often that that, that works out just fine, or uh, 
B, the technical correct version would not work well with the composition. So you, you do a lot of faking with things like lighting in order to uh, force a composition to go a certain way or just, you know, to get the end results the way you want, basically. So, no. The only thing that bothers me seeing what artists do with lighting in that department is just when they obviously don't know what they're doing at all. Uh, when I see them do it wrong and they're obviously competent, there's probably a reason for that. You know, they're doing it uh, to change the shot, to improve the shot, to get a, a better result than they would if they went with what was technically correct. So you don't have to be a slave to technical correctness. That's not really going to help, especially in a storytelling medium. I hope that was clear. I feel like I rambled a little bit there. Oh, I'm scrolled all up. Uh, 76 says, thank you. You're very welcome. But yeah, technical correctness is something you only need to know in service of branching out from it, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know if you, any of you all had, had writing teachers in school or whatever that told you the saying that rules are made to be broken, but you have to know the rules before you can break them. And that's very much the case with drawing proficiency. I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing with this hand right now. You guys are distracting me. Let's see, so that's gonna be shadow. I'm working on getting better at hands too. Still working on faces every day, but you know, you can work on faces for your entire life. Feather that in there a little bit. Joey T says, thank you, very clear. You always have great answers. Well, you're very welcome. I'm glad to help. I think they're great answers because you have great questions, but we could go back and forth on this all day. A little bit of knuckle rendering there. Let's get this nail. greatest hand in the world. I should have spent more time on this in the pencils. There's always moments of regret. Oops. Oh yeah, this I need to pump up a little bit. It's going to be shadow in here. But if something isn't working out, you can always just leave it and sort of just keep seeing it in your periphery and the back of your brain will sort of start going over solutions. And you may just come up with something sort of unrelated to the problem as you're working on the rest of the page. Um, I like to call that letting it think about what it did. You can give your, your problematic areas a little time out and they may come to terms with their own issues. I think this one's coming along. A couple people joined. Thank you, thank you. We are getting gradually more uh, traffic on these streams, so thank you everyone who stopped in. All right, I'm going to try. Um, I'm just trying to think what the coolest thing would be for you guys. I'm just gonna jump onto this face. Again, pretty heavy line art for this very foreground object. 
And the heaviest parts of the line art are going to be the parts that turn away from the light. that's going to be in solid shadow so it doesn't really matter the quality of the line actually let's, let's get the shirt collar light going to heavy into the shadow there you go forget who or I would shout them out but I had some people telling me this week that they bought this tool uh the double-headed zebra brush pen because they'd seen me using it and wanted to try it so that was pretty cool I don't know if that does that make me an influencer guys <laughs> that's up to you all right, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. These might be a little wet, so I'm gonna come on down here. That's gonna be in shadow, so I don't really need to worry about that. I'm gonna start, mm, I just wanna get this in here. work on some of this hair. Let me do the containment line on the head. At least says yes, influencer. <laughs> uh, we'll see it when it starts making me any kind of money. Oh, how's the graphics joined? Hello. Where is he? Where are you? There you are. Where did you go? Those are some nice lines there. I like those. All right, and I can always come back to that in a bit. All right, let me get some of these hairs. Started drawing hair like Zach. I just noticed that. Well, worst things could happen, certainly. Wheeler! Wheeler's here. Everybody calm down. It's now a normal stream. How you doing today, Wheeler? Oh, house eight says Meath Head Mondays. <laughs> you the only one who's calling it Meath Head Mondays, but I appreciate it every time. Normal? What? Yeah, there's a version of you that's normal out there somewhere. Wheeler says, I'm doing good. I've been messing with watercolors for the first time. Orange is tough to use. Hey, dude. If you mess with watercolors for the first time, that means you've messed with watercolors 100% more than I have. So kudos to you for that. I have never been about traditional color. I'm not, I don't understand color well enough to uh, do it traditionally. I understand line art enough to do that, but when I color, it's usually digital where nothing is permanent, you know? Because I am a chicken. Let's see. 
people can see what I intended by these shapes. The worst thing is when you check your pencils to see like, what did I mean by that? And they like, you clearly also didn't know when the pencil's like, great, thanks past me. it says I'll make fetch happen bro <laughs> I love the juxtaposition of the word bra and a mean girls quote in the same line this is my new favorite thing ever granted there will be a new one probably momentarily but I love it um Wheeler says you're above color like I couldn't see you wearing a rainbow dress yeah I couldn't see myself wearing that either dude <laughs> Congratulations. Hold on, there's more. I have to finish this line though. Elise just says, thanks, past me. <laughs> I do say that to myself a telling amount. I should be more proactive about like providing for my own future accomplishments. I really try, like, one of my mantras is always assume future you is an idiot. And I try really hard to set myself up for success, like, to not do things that will cause me trouble down the line, even with small things, like, you know, and just day-to-day -day artwork and stuff. Do what you can to set yourself up for success. Because who knows, when it comes time to solve that problem you're leaving yourself for later, you might be stupid then. We're all stupid sometimes. So I try. But I've apparently established in this stream that I don't do well enough at that. Claire's entrance music is back in black. Yeah, dude, it always has been. Not even joking. Although that's implying that I ever was out of the black. Which I wasn't. We're getting ears at this angle, man. I'm better at it, but man, it's tricky. All right, let's see. Let me get some of these shadows in. There was some render on this muscle. This will make sense in a minute. Wait for it. Get that pointy. sort of works. I can always come back to it. <laughs> Wheeler. But is it flat black, gloss black, matte black? Hmm. Hey, I can mix and match. There's some diversity in my wardrobe. There's different sheens of black. All right, get this jawbone here. Soft render that back very delicately. Let's loop in. Okay, so that's gonna be black. I'll say it says bone black. I love it. All right, where are we gonna go from here? Let's do this one. I don't like using this tool to fill in large areas of black because it's not it's not refillable, so it's not an infinite source. Okay, here comes a line. <sighs> Almost. Okay that for now. Uh, let's see. Ends 
here. <laughs> Whether you live or love aliens, I think it comes down to about the same thing, my dude. Um, there's no aliens in this this particular project, I'm sorry to say. Oh, wait, there are actually some. There's one page that has some aliens on it, but I don't think that would satisfy your, your keen interest. All right, there's some wrinkles in the shoulder there. All right, that'll do for now. Let me get some of these hair shadows. Fully cover the forehead so we don't have to worry about eyebrows or anything like that. Wheeler says, I saw Cthulhu, though, or was that you teasing? Oh, that was a completely different project. Don't you ever worry. I'm always working on multiple things at a time. But yes, there is a, a pending Cthulhu, but it is a commission, so it's just one piece. All right, that's going to be black. I'm not sure... What is the situation with the ear and lighting the ear? I am not sure yet. I have to think about that. I'll let it think about what it did. Okay. So these little floating panels, I'm realizing this is probably just like visually nonsensical why there's these little floating panels. Um... Oh, Bueller's in. Hey, Bueller. Always good to see you. Well, Fedra says, what kind of brush do you use? So right now I'm using the uh, Zebra Feud uh, Double-Headed Brush Pen. This is one of my favorites. Get this line. Sorry, we had a port connection there for a second. Little blip. Um, but the idea behind these panels, this thing and these things floating around him, are essentially, like you could see them more there, they are um, uh, uh, nanites, nanobots that are like forming little heat panels for him in this arctic waste. All right, I'm going to save this line here. And I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to fill in some of these blacks real quick just so we know what we're looking at. like this are really useful for solid blacks but they can also be really textural like um where did it go oh if you see on the uh on the capsule here some of the textures i got just from letting the brush run to dry brush a little bit that really has some cool effect and there's crow he turned out good right i was very surprised how well he turned out there will be some fine tuning still but Everybody's coming along nicely. Got all this, these little details on the lettering is really making it pop. I have to figure out what to do with this other font, but uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, let's see, where was I? Let me fill this in. 
We learned is asking, so how often do you learn something completely new in your field? I'm not 100% sure what you mean. Um, I mean, there's not like, innovations in the field of comics lately that I know of. Or do you just mean me personally? How often do I, like, go out of my way to learn new things and new techniques or new approaches to drawing? Um, if that's your question, and I'm amending your question to be that so that I have an answer, uh, as often as possible, like I do my, my daily warm-ups, and that's always studying something I either haven't done before or know I'm bad at to try to keep up in that skill. And there are a few technical skills I could improve on, like I could know more about Photoshop and, you know, different programs, and I could know more about Google SketchUp and different things like that that are useful for modeling and stuff. Um, and I am dipping into those things and learning more of those things uh, lately, bit by bit, because everything is time consuming. But I'm definitely, oops, didn't finish this. I'm definitely continuing to learn. If that sort of answers your question. I don't know. Hey, you don't want to plateau, especially in an art field. If you plateau, if you just arrive somewhere and stay there and keep doing the same thing. Nothing is going to stand out. Your work may be perfectly serviceable, but it won't be. It won't have that life to it. Uh, so how often do you learn something completely? Oh, that's for you. You said that already. Okay, so you specified just you. Got it. Uh, Lisa says, what is your favorite museum? My favorite museum? Ugh. I don't know if I have a favorite museum. I've lived, like, in a enough places with really cool museums. I'm sure there's something in the, uh, you know what, it's probably the Science Museum in the D.C. area. Or is that the Children's Science Museum? No, I can't remember. There are great museums in the nation's capital. Um, I'm, again, I'm going to non-answer and say my favorite aquarium is the Baltimore Aquarium. Although the Atlanta Aquarium is a close second. I'm a sucker for a good aquarium. I don't know if that's close enough to being a museum. I've gone to some great exhibits at museums. Um, you know, that, that weren't, like, traveling uh, exhibits that weren't limited to that museum. So I can say I like the exhibit a lot, but it's not specific to the museum. So I don't know. A sky says, wow, Sarah tearing it up as usual. What a shocker. Thank you, sir. Ayotsanya says, hi, I love your work so much. Really inspiring, and I'm learning a lot from you. Thank you. That's what I like to hear. Visual medium, this is the best way to learn, is by, by seeing. Where's my other pen? I'm losing my pen. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Wheeler's making fun of me for liking the Science Museum. I'm a nerd, dude. What do you want? I'm going to be as nerdy as I want to be. Let's see. I didn't miss any comments. Andrew J. Brown. Hello. Andrew was one of the two people that... <laughs> Ordered one of my uh, recent Goosebumps covers, or variant covers, rather. Ugh, oh, this is not, this is too big of an area. Which I only mentioned because I very shamefacedly finally shipped it to him today. After, uh, it feels like a week of car trouble when I can get that done, so. But I know he's very forgiving. He's one of my OGs. That will probably take a little bit more blending, but I will let it sit for now. There's a lot of letting it sit in this process, I find, figuring out exactly what it needs. And more specifically, what I mean is that I think it would be more fun for you all to see this entering. Well, to be that, mm, yeah, we'll go with this. You know, Lee says, glad you no longer have car trouble. Yeah, dude, it was like 24 hours. 
I guess this is a live stream, so I have to like talk about my problems. Um, so I ordered new tires from Sam's Club, because that's what I could afford. And I went on the scheduled day to pick them up. And when I got there, they said, oh, we were misinformed. Your tires actually have not arrived yet, which was very frustrating because I formatted my day around that. And my tires were so bad at that point, which, you know, was my own fault. I let them get there, but I just can't prioritize car stuff. I'm doing this all the time, guys. Leave me alone. So um, I had to wait a couple of days for my actual tires to come in. All right, hold on, more questions. Because I was commenting that you better pick the science museum. Oh, okay. That I better pick the science museum. Okay, so you are a pro nerd. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Andrew says, oh, yes, quit forgiving. I'm sorry. It's just ego, dude. I like knowing I can get things delivered right on time. And when it doesn't happen, I, it's just me feeling bad about myself. It's just be, me being stuck up. Um... Where was I? Oh, I was complaining about my tires. That's right. Um, so several days later, and this is after I called them back a couple of times, like, hey, where are my tires? They were supposed to be here a little a week ago. And they're like, no, we're sorry. It's, you know, it's the holidays, which is legitimate. You know, I've worked customer service before and I know <clears throat> how crazy that can get. So I understand. Whatever. They're doing their best and they're not in charge of the shipping snafus anyway. So I finally get the call. My tires are in. So great, I schedule the next available uh, time slot I can, which is still several days away from the day of the call, but whatever, it's whatever they can do. Um, so I go in uh, on that day, and I'm sitting there for a while, they're working, and one guy comes out and hands me my lug nut key, and it's completely trashed. This thing is so old, it's just stripped. There, there's there's no information on the inside of that thing so he's basically so he says um basically we need to replace this or we can't do your tires today so you need to walk down to the corner store the auto body store and see if they have this i was like okay this is an experience i have not had at a service but okay i'll i'll try that uh so i'm walking down in like the windy in the cold of south dakota i walk down to the uh, the auto parts store down the street, and they don't have it. So at that point, I'm not even sure what's what's going to happen because they can't get my tires off at all. You can't replace them. You can't get the old ones off. So I go back, and I tell the guy, who's very sympathetic, like we had like a bond by the end of this ordeal, and I tell him like they don't have the part, like what are we going to do? And he says basically, and it's already late at this point, so we can't really hang around. So he says, here's what we'll do. Um, you're, you're just going to have to find either a new lug nut key or a new, or just get all new non lucky lug nuts. And that ended up being what I had to do. And that was like most of the next day. For those of you who saw my uh, daily work report from that day, it was like an all day ordeal. I did end up getting actually quite a bit done that day, surprisingly. Actually, I think that was the day I finished the pencils for uh, MST3K piece. But yeah, that was my whole like two day runaround of just trying to get something I had already paid for attached to my vehicle. Ugh. Adulting, you guys. I do not recommend. Let's see, what are people saying about that tale of woe? Andrew says, I'm feeling you. I'm dealing with car stuff today, too. Yeah, it's always the worst, dude. It's my least favorite part of life. Scott says, Sam's Club uh, auto service at its finest. Oh, wish we lived closer. Would have handled it for you in 12.4 seconds. That is a very specific amount of time, Scott. <laughs> very specific indeed. feel like you may be. it's possible to know too much about your own tire changing skills. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Scott, I wish we lived closer, too. No. Let's 
some point, I'm going to be coming to visit our, our mutual friend. So we will see if we can meet up then. Don't count on it. <laughs> it's a big, it's a big dream, but we'll see if we can make it happen. At least I need to. Wait, what are we need doing? Oh, car stuff? Ugh. I hope not. Oh, you think it's the worst thing? I don't know. <laughs> That's the problem with these comment streams. Is like, I don't know what people are responding to. I gave Wheeler a hard time because I thought he wasn't a nerd and he's actually a huge nerd. I'm ashamed. It's super easy, but I'm 48 and lived through that same nonsense and own the tools to have helped you. I believe it. I mean, I, I totally believe it. I am very in awe of people who know how to fix cars. That just seems like such a valuable skill that I just don't have the chops for. But everyone has their thing, right? Everyone has a couple of things. And none of mine are cars. Wow, there is a lot going on in the conversation right now. Okay, Scott says, there's cons out here when duty settles down. Dude, I know. Like, I want to be out there. It sounds like a great scene. It sounds like a really awesome scene. I would love to be out there. I just have to find a good time. And I'll definitely be there for the cons when they start back up. Hold on, let me finish this, and then I answer more questions. Uh, let's see. Wheeler says, Clara, I got Sean in here. He's met you at some cons with me. He needs art in his life. Well, he's getting it right now. That pokey ate me. <laughs> Scott says, I hate cars, too, just trying to save money. Who's not trying to save money? <laughs> Andrew says, Oh, it was smart of me to get a nib holder, but no nibs from jet pens. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you what your motives are. Does seem a bit counterintuitive, but maybe you're maybe it's kind of long con. Like I don't know, dude. <laughs> I mean, you gotta start somewhere. Awesome that you got nibs though. Nibs can do some really fun stuff. As most of you probably know, I use nibs mainly for things like clouds and speed lines. Sorry, I keep nudging the phone with the shoulder. Clara said in the Back to the Future car, so don't feel too bad for her. Yep. I at least have one thing going for me. I sat in the Back to the Future car. There we go. Helmet. Andrew says, I have the nibs in my next order. I just don't know why I didn't get them together. LOL. Sometimes, I have found the jet pen sometimes does that. I'm sure it has to do with, like, distribution or whatever, or just what they have available. So, I don't know. They're not as bad as Amazon sometimes when you order, like, three things at once and they send everything in a separate package. Although even that, I think, is probably justified when you consider that they're coming from different places. Still looks pretty stupid when it arrives.
<clears throat> Scott just says Amazon. Ugh. I hear ya, but where would we be without it? All right. Just trying to figure out what I'm bold enough to dip into here. Let's do this tiny nose. Oh, no, wait. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do this tiny nose. That turned out great. It's always such a pleasant surprise. Uh, let's see. You know, Tanya says, may I ask what pen you use for your underdrawings? I'm new to trying out comic book stuff, so I've just been using pencil. Sorry to interrupt conversation. Not at all. You, uh, you are the conversation. All right, so here's... So I can answer that question, and I can also answer your actual question. Your actual question is, what blue pencils would you use if you were drawing with a blue pencil? And I would use... Uh, a color race blue pencil. Um, this is kind of the, this is a darker one than I'd prefer. They have a lighter blue one as well. Um, this is sort of the the industry standard. I don't, however, use this very often. I didn't use it for this. What I did for these is I take my pencils. There we go. And I, I scan them in, and I convert them to. 40% cyan, which is just this blue, and then I print them out on inking paper uh, so that nothing is permanently ruined and I get to use a surface that's better for inking for the inks and a surface that's better for penciling for the pencils. Um, but you totally can just draw your comics with uh, a color race or non photo blue pencil, if that answers your question. Oh, Scott says, okay, pan-fried Brussels sprouts. I'm assuming Brussels sprouts and you're not pan-frying Brussels itself are done. So with love, CM, your artwork is inspiring, amazing, and hanging on my wall, but dinner call. My gosh, pan-fried Brussels sprouts sound amazing. Uh, keep creating, my friend. You too, dude. Make amazing food and amazing pipes. Go eat dinner. Scott makes really cool handmade pipes. Like smoked pipes, for those of you who do not know. All right, let's see. Ayotan says, yes, it does. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I am so nervous about this mouth. Here we go. Start as light as I like. If that's any comfort. It's pretty good. Oh boy. Let's see. Let's get the lower lip here. That works. That's scary doing a live stream because I'm further away than I normally am. Let's see. Wheeler says, Clara, you don't have to answer, but what is the actual price of a comic book compared to the selling price? Well, I mean, A, I don't have the exact answer, and there's so many variables. It depends on like, who's publishing it and who the distributor is. Well, there's really only like one distributor. It's only Diamond, but um, you know what I mean. There's so many, so many things happening on the business end. Um, I don't really have an answer to that question because it's going to be different per artist. Like I'm a new upcoming artist or up and coming artist, so I don't get paid that much. But the that's starting to improve. As I continue to move upwards. Yeah, it really depends. There's 
there's an impossible number of variables. I don't know if there really formally is an answer to the question, unless you're asking about literal production costs, which again is not something I would really know. Um, okay, this is hard shadow. <clears throat> okay, eight me is also off to dinner. It's dinner time. Gotta go. Have fun, peeps, and nice work, Clara. Thank you. I always love your work and your leather. <laughs> That's right. My 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 leather jacket that I wear almost exclusively to conventions these days. All right, you have a good dinner, dude. Oh, look at the time. It's like an hour already. Um, you know what, guys? I'm gonna mm, going to do the containment line on this hand because it jumped out and grabbed me, and I have no power to resist. Hang on. Okay, now. I'm going to, wait, hold on, there's questions. <laughs> Space lady has recovered quickly. Wheeler says she got a COVID vaccine. Fortunately, it wasn't COVID to begin with. It was severe falling injuries, which were solved by nanobots putting them back together, swarming over her, as we see here. Um, I'm going to wrap this up guys because I have a couple other things I got to do tonight but y'all were great this was a very fun and talkative night uh so I will see you guys next next Monday and y'all have a good evening